How challenging do you think the Big House tournament, the Melee tournament, will be for you as compared to other tournaments this year? Uh, this is easily top two in terms of difficulty. Uh, Mewtwo King and Wizzy are finally entering an event uh, this year together since I think last time it was Genesis. I'm not even sure if they both entered that. But um, there's 900 entrants to this tournament. It's one of the biggest. And the skill pool here is wild. To give you a perspective on how wild the skill pool is, Mewtwo King and I are projected, if Mewtwo King beats IBDW, to play in quarterfinals, which is kind of crazy to think about. But when you have sort of an absence from the scene, but you still know a player is very, very good. Like, I just saw Mewtwo King four-stock Wizrobe on a stream the other day. A lot of the times, this sort of absence from competing, it makes seeding that much more difficult. And actually, right now, that's a really hot topic in Melee. Should a player be punished by not attending tournaments over them being rewarded for maybe going decently far in bracket, having some, you know, mid-losses in a bracket, but still giving those sort of points for competing? Because they were saying right now, uh, for, for me right now, if I was to not enter Big House, if I was to announce today and not go, I'm pretty sure I would have rank one locked in for the year. Um, I think at this point, if, if I went and it didn't go too great, I think I would still have it just because I did go to many other events. There was a lot of good wins for me. But I wish there was a better system that would truly reward players for attendance so they don't have to be scared to like, oh, I'm going to, you know, if I lose this event, I'll go down this year. But because of the nature of Melee and the sort of like, choices that players have, there's no guaranteed attendance of anyone, like tennis, it's a lot more difficult to make these rankings, and that's why we depend on a panel for the MPGR, rather than an algorithm like the PGRU does. So, you haven't seen Mewtwo King play consistently in a while. How do you evaluate someone like that, who, I mean, we had lunch with him at Super Smash Con, and he was basically like, I don't think he's going to going to enter it all in, in Melee for the rest of the year. Now he has, but how do you evaluate facing someone like that when you haven't seen him in a while? In terms of seeding, I don't know. You, you, you roll a d20, and whatever, whatever lands on it, that's what they're seeded. It's, it's, so, it's so hard to tell, right? If you could ask me, um, if Armada right, was to enter Big House right now, and if Armada was to go against Wizzy and Zane, do you have full confidence that Armada would beat both Wizzy and Zane? Uh, let's say back to back. The, the regular person would say yes, but the amount of improvement I personally have seen from those two players, it would be really hard to call, given how close their last two meetups were. Um, and so in this case, Mewtwo King, I think the general consensus is that he might not make it into top eight, maybe, only because um, he seated, I believe he seated at ninth, uh, but also at Genesis, which was the last bit of data we even have for Mewtwo King, he, uh, I believe he got 33rd place. I think he lost to Trefasia, and I believe in Ice Climbers players, I have to check. Um, so I think that performance sort of turned him off from competing for the rest of the year. I think he was focusing on other things, like Ultimate, writing his book, his stream. Uh, he wanted a, soar, a sort of more defined source of income, given his career path in Smash, and given the volatility of esports, right? A lot of the top players here were now wondering, how long is this truly going to last? Are we sort of now required to play ultimate to even subsist or can we just do it off of melee in terms of pot sizes in melee it's very very low this year but somehow viewership is way up for melee this year even though there's not as many entrants as before so the 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 game clearly still has a cult following clearly still has a massive audience watching it and it's very very unique in that regard like in main stage we had melee and ultimate and i think viewership for melee ended up being higher than ultimate granted there was scheduling conflicts and ultimate running late but it still is really really interesting to see that melee is still keeping up with those viewership levels given the standard tournament um so yeah it's it's just they're everyone's primed and sort of trying to figure out especially mewtwo king how much time should they put into melee um but the, his fans love to see him play melee that's where he got his start and i think his sub count on twitch went way up and he announced he was competing at big house so i think him Going on a run at this tournament would be pretty historic. Let's talk about, well, the fact is that established best player may very well not be at Big House. So who are some of the other names that you're really looking at with a lot of momentum going into this one? I'm assuming Nairo has to be one. Um, yeah, right now, in, in terms of seeding, and I can, I can sort of uh, pull up the brackets here, Nairo, Mars, Tweaks, Sam, Sora. Um, if one of those four players doesn't win this tournament, that is shocking to me. Given the fact that MKLA was not here. If one of those four players doesn't win, it'll be shocking to me. But in the loser side of the projected top eight, you have players like Shuton, like Light, The Buzz, Isin. Players who have proven they can take sets off of anyone at this point, 
and it really boils down to who has the most match of experience, who has the most comfort being in the hot seat, and who has proven time and time through this year that they can actually be that person. Uh, most recently, Dark Wizzy too. He's seated, I believe, top 16. Dark Wizzy had a last hit situation with Tweak at Glitch, and he's proven now so often with, with each coming turret that he enters, he can place higher and higher with Mario. Um, I say one of those four players can win, but it is a non-zero chance that anyone that I haven't mentioned yet might not win the tournament. Uh, it's been so odd to see when you have a bigger and bigger event, especially clashing of regions, and this is the important thing I haven't mentioned yet. When you have two regions clash, like California or New York or Florida or Japan, those players will most likely meet at a national. But international talent clashing with the U.S. talent is more likely guaranteed with the more entrance that you have. Um, the more rounds of pools that they go through, the more matches you have to win in order to guarantee yourself into a top spot with a game that's still relatively just a year old, like Ultimate, the more chances you have of upsets. Upsets are far more likely in Ultimate than they are in Melee. And if the patterns continue, um, if I had to put my money on who would win, it really boils down to the, who, which one of these players is least likely to get upset. Um, and in that case, it's looking like it's probably going to be... It's probably going to be Mars winning this tournament. Um, he, he's gotten upset in the past, but if everyone's sort of had their time to shine and their sort of time to go through bracket and not have much of a, a barrier, it might be him. But I believe Nairo did beat Mars at main stage. I have to double check that. And they're projected to play again in semifinals. And then you have Tweak or the same Sora also projected to play here in winter semifinals as well. It really depends there who can actually go through the loser's bracket. So it's really, really hard to tell. But it would be... I, I, it would be interesting, and I think I, I, have, I have confidence in Mars this time around to win this tournament. So we'll see what happens. Big House, Detroit, Michigan, October 4th and 6th. Hungrybox will be there. ESPN Esports will be there. Hungrybox, as always, thank you very much for your time. No problem. Thank you for having me.